Hey everybody. So I am introducing you to my daughter today. Her name is Elizabeth. And the reason why I am bringing her on is because Elizabeth has lost about what? 30, I want to say it's like right around 30 pounds, maybe more, Right. but not more than 40. The girl that you're seeing right now, this is literally my mini me. Do you see this? <laughs> she, um, she's always been very tiny. Um, but after having four kids, you'd put on some weight and you know, our hormones, we do that. Yeah. Um, also the reason why she's on is because Elizabeth has always been addicted to milk. <laughs> when she was little, that's all she would drink was milk. And as a busy mom, um, trying to run around and clean up after little ones and um, do all the busy stuff that mothers do, stay at home moms. She got into a habit of drinking milk just to be able to keep going during the day. She kind of used it as a meal replacement. Yeah. And so, Liz we talked about this quite a bit because she would call me in the middle of the night sometimes crying mom i'm in so much pain i think i need a knee replacement now i'm laughing because i've done some healing in my own life and i know what lactose did to me and it caused inflammation and it caused pain in my joints and so i'm telling her elizabeth listen to me you have to stop drinking the milk and she would like kind of say yeah yeah and she kinda would keep doing it. About it it's like mom i've drank milk all my life how am i supposed to just give that up and you know yeah that was really hard so describe the pain that you were going through during this time so the pain was really like just directed to my joints mostly my knees and my ankles um but mostly my knees i knew like if my knees were hurting me my ankles were going to be causing me some pain too but um it was the majority of my knees that were hurting your knees and were hurting sometimes it was uh it would just be one knee would just be like so i don't know it felt like it was on fire it felt like you couldn't physically see that it was inflamed but to me it felt swollen, it felt hot, and just, it hurt to bend my knees, sometimes just one knee, sometimes both. I, I would have to get down on the floor and, like, and pick up toys and things and, you know, uh, get. I would be stuck on the floor, like, I can't get up now, I'm stuck here. And it would be excruciating pain just to bend my knees to stand up or sit down. I remember there was a time I banged my knee into a stair rail for a short steps for, for a short staircase, and it hit right in the top of my knee where my knee had been hurting. I'm like, oh god, <laughs> just Ouch. send me to the ER now. <laughs> just, just put me out of my misery. It hurt really bad. It put me in tears. But of course, I had kids. I didn't want them to see me like crying like that. So I kind of held back the tears. I'm just like holding my like. It hurts. You know, that's, I don't know how else to explain it. So I was sleeping like, I can remember just the nights when you would call me in tears. Wake me up at what, two, three so, o'clock yeah. in the morning. So the she pain would, would be during the day and I would try to just kind of um, go throughout my day. Even though I hurt, a lot of times I'd end up sitting on the couch taking a lot of breaks or, you know, just can't get up, but I have to, I have things I have to do. And then at night, I'd finally fall asleep and I'd get a, maybe a couple hours of sleep in and I'd wake up because my knee would just be throbbing. I couldn't get comfortable no matter which, if I stretched my leg out, if I bent it in, you know, no matter what position I would try to make myself comfortable and nothing worked. I'd just lay there in pain until I, I my body was just like, okay, we have to sleep. I got a big day ahead of me and I would and I would I there would be times when I call my mom like I'm hurting I don't know what to do I need to sleep because I have to take care of my kids in the morning get them to the school whatever it was I had to do that day I had a day of running around with my kids at home and uh I would tell her like I feel like I have arthritis I feel like um 
I just want my legs to be cut off at the, <laughs> you know, right above the knee down, you know. Yeah, she was in a lot of pain. Conversations like that. Yeah. And I can just remember being so frustrated because I knew what her problem was. I knew that she needed to give up the milk, that the lactose, the sugar in the milk was what's causing her pain, the inflammation. And there was a lot of resistance to that. She, you know, I mean, here I was, I raised her on milk, right? I, you know, basically we gave did, her the addiction that I'm telling her to stop doing it. We didn't know, like, she didn't know when we were young kids. She was just trying to keep us fed, keep us happy, you know? She wasn't doing all the research that she started doing. What, when did you start doing your research? When I, when I, when I got, went into the ER, remember, I was so full of fibroids and they were, wanted to do surgery and put me but on when hormones. when was that? That was mm. like... Three or three years ago, three maybe. Three years ago. Yeah, whenever. So she didn't know all this new stuff that she knows now, so. So here I am just popping off with, you need to do this, and this is causing this, and this is causing this. Like, I'm talking to her like, you know, like, I know what I'm talking about, and she's just looking at me like, whatever, milk's not causing this problem. I need a knee replacement. I've got <laughs> something going on. I've got, like, serious arthritis, and I, I'm, what, 20, 23, 24, and I need a knee replacement, and I'm like child you do not need a knee replacement you need to stop drinking milk i knew so, it yeah. well i knew what her diet was mm -hmm. we had these conversations well, I, we're very close <laughs> i feel like what are you eating what are you doing why why are your knees hurting you this bad you don't need a knee replacement like what's going on and then she would tell me what her diet is and i'd be like mm -hmm. okay I, I know exactly what your problem is. That's inflammation from the milk. But, you know, we're all brainwashed to milk. It does a body good, yeah, right? Yeah, you know. You know, supplemental programming from lots of uh, money. The media. TV ads, right? Media. Okay, so my next question is, now that we know that you were in so much pain, you're a young mother, you're trying to take care of your kids. I mean, she's got what? You had, during this time, Isaiah was like six. Zachary was what, four? Yana was what, three? Raven, two? Or, yeah. yeah. So my grandchildren well, are actually, little stair Raven, steps. Raven would have probably been like maybe newborn or even a year. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, because Raven's... Two she's now. three. Yeah, she'll be three. She'll be three next. Okay, yeah. yeah. So they were very young, <laughs> which means that she's doing a lot of physical labor with the babies. And so as we're having these conversations, um, what made you finally decide? Well, honestly, when I would tell you, it's probably the milk. It's. I mean, I'm not a doctor, okay, you guys? You know so I'm not a doctor. but like, it's probably. If you try to stop doing this, it you might see a difference and you might feel better. Is how, basically how she kind of put it. Just but what try. was the resistance? What you? I mean, it took a long time before you were finally like, okay, I'm gonna do it. What was? Was it just programming in your mind? Was it? I don't have time. I'm just gonna drink this. I don't care. Like, so I would drink a lot of milk just to kind of. It was quick, easy. You know, hey, just pour a glass of milk. I feel full now. You know, um, I didn't eat a whole whole lot I would eat when I was hungry but I didn't a lot of times I didn't feel like I had the time because I'm constantly feeding and caring for the kids like where's the time for me to actually sit down and have a meal mm. I just pour myself a glass of milk I'm like, okay just keep going yeah just keep going literally I went through so much milk and finally uh, just what made me want to try this was just the first time that I actually was going to be like, okay, I'm going to try to stop drinking milk and see how I do because I'm so used to drinking milk all the time, every single day, every day, um, is I was just tired of being in pain and the, the words that my mom was telling me was like, just try, just try and see how you feel, you might be surprised. And I went a couple days without drinking milk, I think maybe like, I maybe made it four, maybe five days and I was like, I still crave that milk um, but I did notice that like I was there was a difference in how I was feeling a little bit um, but then I kind of caved in you know <laughs> I was like I need my milk you know and but then what, you noticed and the then difference. I, and then like I, I kept kind of letting those words kind of keep going in my head and I'm like I didn't try long enough I didn't try long enough I finally um, 
the first time I tried was right around the time COVID first hit. Right. The pandemic, uh, that was what, fall 2020? Yeah. Uh, is when I did that little week long, I tried not to drink milk and it was it just, I gave up too soon. I didn't try. And then, so recently, uh, last New Year's, when we had moved into our new house, I kind of- Last year. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when I really was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna give up milk. Uh, I'm tired of being in pain. I don't, I don't wanna really give this a go. And it was hard. There were times where like my kids would be eating cereal or something, they're having milk and I'd like have a spoonful or something of their cereal. And after like, I don't know, I wasn't really paying attention to the time but I did notice that like the more I, I wasn't drinking milk and just saying, no, I'm not going to have that. I'm going to, I'm just going to do something different, have a snack on something different. And I, um, like it would make my stomach upset if I had milk, I'd get the bubble guts and get kind of, what is that called? Get gassy or whatever. Um, or you noticed that it didn't I was, feel good. Yeah. yeah. The milk. The dairy was hurting my stomach. She put two and two together and realized. Um, mm -hmm. And then I started noticing too that my pain was going away. I could finally sleep at night um, without having to like try to make myself comfortable. I, I, I was getting more sleep. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't hurting during the day, and I and I and I, I I put two and two together, and I was like, you know what? I'm not drinking the milk. I might have a little here and there. But I'm not drinking like glass after glass after glass. Um, and then on top of it, cooking, like, because you know, a box of macaroni and cheese for your kids, it calls for what, a quarter cup of milk or something, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I was having, so I was having a lot of milk every day, that lactose. And um, when I gave it up as a, a beverage of choice, um, I finally call. I finally talked to my mom one day, and I'm like, you know what? I realize I don't hurt, and now I just I don't drink milk at all. You will never see me fill up a glass of milk and be like, oh yeah, this is great. It matter. Uh, I actually feel guilty when I see my daughters drinking milk, mm -hmm. and I'm like, we. I want to get them off of this stuff. But that's a that's a that's a whole nother story. <laughs> We're not going to go there right story, now. But, um, they do love half and half though, because uh, Nana doesn't have milk. <laughs> I don't drink milk. I, I I might have it with like macaroni and cheese, and I I just really just I try to stay away from it. I'm like, I'm Something cooking. that I really wanted to point out to to our listeners is, guys, think about your cycles. I can remember her telling me how much she hurt so much more during her time of the month when she was drinking milk yes. because of the hormones. Now, Heavy periods too, long, longer periods, uh, much more cramping. Now that I don't drink the milk, right? Um, I barely even know that I'm on my period until like I you know, women, we, we have our, we know our cycles, but, uh, I don't even know half the time anymore when I'm going to start. My periods have lightened up. Do you remember calling me and telling me, oh my God, I'm, I've got all this issue going on, the, the heaviness and the, I got to go clean up. Like what the heck is going on, mom? Like I can't even do this. Well, and I'm like, pain. stop, Elizabeth, listen to mom, stop drinking milk yeah, and, and she things. finally did it and oh my gosh you guys she's lost 30 plus pounds um because she's not taking in all that milk sugar all the time and you got to think about what's in the milk what's in the milk unless it's organic grass-fed milk there are or even just organic just even if you don't do grass-fed i mean that's great if you you do that but even just organic look for the labels you know look at your labels Make sure that you know you're looking for what. Uh, you no. want to make sure that it doesn't. It's not. It's the cow is not eating GMO feed. That they're grass fed. That they're not getting hormones injected into them so that they produce more milk. 
because they, you know, they want the cows to think that they have all these babies to feed. So they're giving them hormones so that they're producing this milk to feed their babies. And that's how they're getting milk to sell to the consumer. That's how they make for, more money. For mass production. And they're giving them all kinds. They give these cows antidepressants. Hormones. Okay. Yeah. Hormones. Antidepressants. Um, they give them antibiotics, which is a whole nother talk. But you got to think about that, ladies. Okay. Because we're basically taking these medications into our bodies and it's messing with our cycles. Okay. She was having all kinds of problems with her cycle. She, I swear her mm. niece, she would call me crying and I would just be so frustrated because, you know, I'm her mom and I, I want her to feel better. And mm. she's taking care of my grandkids and I want my grandkids to feel happy and they've got this grumpy mom that didn't sleep last night and hasn't slept and I don't know how long she's grumpy and she doesn't feel good and she's like what's going on and I'm just like god how many times do I have to tell you but she did it and I'm so proud because I mean she's doing so much better now as far as her health goes she's I mean, still working on some stuff but she's I'm, come a long way and she's healed quite a bit I went from a hundred, I'm gonna put my weight out there. I don't care. Uh, I went. She's from, so small. What? <laughs> I went from. I'm. I'm four eleven. Uh, I've been that tall since. Sure. Seven, <laughs> I, I'm very short. I've been that. I haven't grown since the since the seventh grade. But uh, I'm four eleven and I weighed a hundred and forty six pounds. The last time I weighed myself before my weight loss, and then um. And people are starting to say, hey, you know, you look like you've lost quite a bit of weight. And I didn't have a scale at home. I don't I don't really believe in them or whatever. But when people started making comments and stuff, I was like, okay, obviously. Um, I got down to 115 pounds and just in over summer. So about 30 pounds, yeah. Uh, and mm -hmm. then I weighed myself again and, uh, a couple weeks later and I was at 108. Oh, Quite a bit so, more. um, the, yeah, so, um, uh, you know, having kids and all that stuff that can affect your weight and everything. A lot of women, Hormones. a lot of women, they go and they have a kid. Not all women do this either, but they have kids and they, they put on some baby weight. I had four kids back to back. Uh, Isaiah, Zachary, Ayana, Raven. And so I had put on the baby weight. I it was the big I was the largest I'd been ever, ever. in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, here I am. Normally my my <laughs> pre pregnancy weight was about 125, but I had gotten down to about a 95 pounds at times. That was my that was the tiniest, but I tried to stay between uh, you know, 125 pounds was I thought I looked healthy at that weight pre pregnancy and I had I did have a weight loss goal when I uh after I had kids, I wanted to get back in shape and um, whatnot. I had a goal of 125 pounds. Uh, and I could never reach that. But I never had let go of the milk like I have done over the last year. Um, that's when the weight just kind of... And my mom goes, it's hormones. You're you're pretty much done having babies. You've let go of the milk. You've um, you, so your body is finally homeostasis. Yeah, finally normalizing, and that made sense to me because I couldn't. Nothing else could really make sense to me how I had dropped weight like that. Hmm. She can. She helps me. She gives me the answers that I'm looking for that makes sense. So. Mama um, does a lot of research. <laughs> Mom does a lot of research. I'm just at home with kids chasing little kids and I go and I have questions for her and since she does do she gets online and she does her I research. Do a lot of research. She, she follows a lot of doctors who know what they're talking about. And she she pretty much goes, Liz, you know, you what your body went through a lot of stress having kids. You know, and she's also experienced the same thing. You know, she had four kids really quick. Mm -hmm. um, you she, were my first. She had issues with weight gain and weight loss fluctuating, you know, mm -hmm. dieting and then having a plateau where you can't lose weight no more. Um, so my next question to you is, 
what did your healing mean to you as a mom and why are you telling your story? This it, is really important, especially for us moms. It meant a lot because when you're a mom in pain and you, you don't want to get off the couch because you're hurting, um, that's hard. You want to be there for your kids. You want to run around and play with them and, and keep up with their energy level. And um, so when I finally realized that I wasn't in pain like that anymore, it that's what keeps me um, not, you know, going for that glass of milk. Um, so I it don't, keeps you motivated. I don't I like want that. to feel mm -hmm. that way ever again. Right. Um, so it was an addiction. Mm. I had the addiction, um, and I finally let it go. And I will never, I, I, and I, I'm sharing my story because, um, you know, I like, like I, we said earlier in the video, I thought that I might have needed a re, a knee replacement. I thought that I might have arthritis. I wanted my legs to be taken just off cut my off. body just cut them <laughs> off it's so bad um you know and just listen finally listening to my mom i never even had to go to the doctors if mm. it, you know so save saved, money save me a trip mm -hmm. to the doctor save me money from doctors bills saved me money and you know people were trying to tell me oh you need to take a leave you need to you know um painkillers for joint inflammation you know um I didn't go out and buy that kind of stuff to try to s take care of it, you know, at home on my own. I So that saved money. It was just something super simple. If I, you know, hadn't have thought about it, if she yeah. never would have even put it in my, in, in my head as a thought, I would have today still, you know, walking around like, like a little lady. Thinking, like not knowing, right? Yeah. Not knowing exactly what it is. And that's... That's the part that blows my mind about the healing process of the body is the body wants to heal. The body has an intelligence in it that God gave it that it naturally will heal itself if it's supported in the way that it's supposed to, right? And it's so simple. That's that's what blows my mind is that... Really, really simple. It can be the simplest things that if we eliminate them or start doing or whatever, we can just heal. Just heal. The body wants to heal and wants to be healthy. And it she's does. able to run around and chase her kids now without having all this pain in her knees. And it was just something as simple as quitting the milk. So if you're an excessive milk drinker and you can identify with this, then maybe just try. Yeah. Try to go off the milk. And if you find that you're addicted to it, then you know, replace it with something else. I'm going to give you a little secret. Macadamia nut milk or is very close to tasting to regular fresh milk. I like it. I use it quite a bit in my smoothies and stuff, but she might have a tip that she wants I to give you. I uh, don't, I didn't find a milk replacement. I just, um, I started drinking a lot of water when mm. I was thirsty. So you just muscled through it. I, uh, badass like your mom. <laughs> I wasn't a fan of drinking plain water, but I also didn't want to hurt. So if I was thirsty and need, you know, or needed something to put in my belly real fast, I just down a glass of water. And, uh, I, I did, I don't want to promote these either because, uh, there, some of these drinks have, um, aspartame. aspartame. Mm -hmm. There's sparkling waters. If you want to drink sparkling waters, just read labels for aspartame. That's something that helped me kind of get through uh, your milk addiction. My milk addiction. That I would drink go. sparkling waters, mm -hmm. but just please check for aspartame. That's, yeah, that's some, a different topic for a different day. Um, yeah, it's not good for you. But some some people need to, instead of just quitting something cold turkey, you need to replace it with something. And we get that. And so, but... The reason why I wanted to bring her on here is because her healing journey has been really simple in theory, hard to maybe put it into play, but really simple in theory. She actually went through, she was able to quit the milk and she feels fabulous. She looks fabulous and I couldn't be more proud. So I just kind of wanted to give a little bug out there to somebody who might be dealing with this. Are you hurting and do you drink a ton of milk and could that be the problem? 
I mean, it's okay. Like, it's okay. First, you got to admit it, too. Like, with any addiction, you're, right. you enjoy drinking something. It makes you feel full. It's satisfying. But you don't realize mm-hmm. how much harm you're doing to yourself internally. Right. You just save your, just listen to this video. Save yourself the doctor's trip. Save yourself the money. Just if you drink a lot of milk, have a lot of dairy daily, that's milk dairy i meant replace it with organic if you refuse to give it up or just trust just, just stop yeah. just trust us we know what we're talking about these are this is a true story uh we're you know we're real we're here we're, we want to help people heal themselves like my mom said our body wants to heal we just have to be given the tools to do it right we have to have somebody who might know a little bit more than us not even a doctor, but somebody who's had similar issues, be like, hey, I've read a little bit about this, and I think that this is what's going on. Give it a try, you know. Food, food, it's so big. It's literally becomes part of us. When we take food into our bodies, it literally becomes part of our tissues. And if something isn't good for us, it'll go in and cause problems in our tissues. So the milk she was drinking, obviously, we I mean, a lot problems. of things have changed since I've given up milk. A lot of things. And I've lost a lot of, I've lost weight, unwanted weight. And my, for women listening to this, it helped my periods. Yes. Be easier. Yes. Mentally, emotionally, physically, uh, better for my periods, for my cycle. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah. Thank you for watching and listening. And if you have um, a similar story or something you want to share, put a little comment down below. Mm -hmm. Like and subscribe because more stuff is coming. Thank you. Bye.